on the frame maker side. How do we create PDF? I'm going to go all out. I'm going to take all my files, except for the Word document, I don't need it, and I'm going to download them. I'm not doing a checkout on this because this is a one-way trip. I just want the files to be available so that FrameMaker can work with all of these and take the entire publication and work with it using FrameMaker 9. So I open up my map. FrameMaker opens up the file, prompts me which structured application do I want to use, and here's the files. And I don't have to worry about the file names and so on because they're all being managed. And again, this was a download. It's a throwaway document. I've got my different views. I can go in and I can see the file, and here's the structure view that I might already be familiar with. I'm going to take this and generate a book from the map. Yes, the file can be saved. I'm just going to call this Tech Writer Tools Admin Guide. And I'm going to get a message that looks a little scary. There it is. Don't worry about it. This message is just saying, look, what you've done duplicated a unique ID. This error is letting me know that in the combined files, I've stitched together different information that had the same unique identifier. And this happens often if you create content by opening a file, choosing File Save As, and then going in and taking that, putting it into a publication, and not remembering to change the ID. This is a message, not an error. And by the way, really, who cares? The publishing that I'm doing at this point is from files that I've downloaded. This is a one-way trip. I'm not putting these files back into the system. So I just click OK. The book's built, and because I'm using the DidFMX, a bunch of options are going to be set for me. And you're going to see automatically things like chapter numbers and page numbers are set up correctly. Again, if this had been a book map, this is for the Dita purists. If this had been a book map, rather than a Dita map, it could also automatically build things like your table of contents and index. I'm just working with a basic file here. And just collapse the icons here, close off some of these background files, and let's take a look at what we get. This frame file. This is my Tech Writer Tools overview. It has my text in it, what Tech Writer Tools is, and so on, and it says it's chapter one. It also starts on page one of two. The next file is chapter two. The chapter numbers are automatically configured just because I went in and made sure that everything was set up correctly. There's my task, by the way. This is the admin, so it includes the additional information that says register if launched for the first time. And it has all the formatting from FrameMaker. I close this off. I open up my third file. And of course, it's chapter 3. It starts on page 5, which is the first of four pages. And this one actually has some interesting stuff in it. This has stitched together several different topics. And notice that the headings have different formats because of the nested hierarchy. It automatically went in and recognized things to be heading 1s and heading 2s and so on. All of that's automatically done. You've seen a lot of things here that I've gone in and done. I took files that were basic data content. I imported them into the CMS. I worked with them in the content management system to manage the content and check files in and out. I modified the content in several different tools, working back and forth with FrameMaker. I edited and updated the materials. I published the content to HTML and to PDF. I built a knowledge base, and I used a content management, the CM portal. We saw PDF created from the CMS and from FrameMaker. The PDF file that came out of the CMS, we built two different versions of it, one for the administrator and one for the user. We used the CM portal to upload a Word document that could have come from a subject matter expert as a way to provide feedback. There's a lot of ideas here to absorb. If they're brand new, it comes at you fast. Bear in mind that this is recorded. We can also do the demo again if you want to see things expanded, or even if you want it to address some of your specific documentation needs. If you need to follow up with us, you can email us. Here's mine, Nanad's, and Scott's information. Bernard at PublishingSmarter.com, Nanad F at Bluestream.com, or Scott P at Leximation.com. I'm happy to go in and talk to you about legacy file conversion, training, customization, or to arrange a demo like this one using your files and your samples instead of the generic ones that are here. Nanad, if you have any questions about the XDocs side, content management system implementation, or the pricing, definitely follow up with him. I mentioned that the price is good on this. I'm going to allow Nanad to address that specifically. 
and Scott, if you have questions on any of the DITA FMX plugin for anything in regards to DITA, Frame 7.2, or if you have questions about FrameMaker 8 and 9 in regards to uh, working with XDocs, or even if you're using a different content management system, or you have any types of plugins, if you find that there's things you do in FrameMaker day in, day out, and it's a lot of manual and tedious work, talk to Scott. There's a lot of interesting things that he can do with FrameMaker in order to make it easier for you. I'd like to uh, thank everybody. I'd also like to, uh, Nanette and Scott, I'd like to thank the two of you for being involved in this one and for uh, helping to set it up and organize it, because uh, without the tools that you guys produce, none of this would have happened at all.